by its rod. And this one's called, God Said Love is Most Important. So if we read this book, it's like a God's Love Manual. It's like a love story from cover to cover. We might start to understand what love is or how to do it for success in life. Do the most important thing, love. The Bible says God is love. The Bible says that the greatest is love. The Bible says that without love, we are nothing. It's like, it's the most important thing. For success, love is the way to success. It says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is not selfish. We may have a wrong meaning of the word love today. Where it's the opposite. It's like uh, we love the greatest selfish pleasure or something. I love pizza. I love money, etc. Not I love someone else or love God. God's two greatest commandments for us are to love him and to love others. So if we choose to love, we're going to obey his, all his commandments. So it should be very important to us love. Understanding it, understanding how to operate in it. Like Jesus said, without him we can do nothing successfully. It's like we can't love like we're supposed to love by ourselves. It says that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. It says that the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Bible also says that we have like a selfish, unloving flesh nature from birth and that unless we get the Holy Spirit's power putting that desire to death in us, we can't love like we're supposed to love. We've got to get a love from God pouring into us and pouring out of us. So it's basically if you want to obey God, you'll be a loving person. Prayer is about talking to God. Prayer is about asking God for what's best to do in your life. Prayer is about getting answers back. If you lack wisdom, ask God. He'll give it back to you. God will tell you to do loving things towards his kingdom and towards others. And he'll give you the power to do it. So it's like God can tell us, go love your enemy. Oh, I can't do that, God. I'll help you to do it. And he'll give you the supernatural power to act good towards your enemy. The word love is not because something's physically pleasurable to me, I'll do it or something. <laughs> love can be going and trying to do the highest good for an enemy that's trying to do harm to you. It's like um, love seeks to do good for others and hate seeks to harm others. And God says, choose love, not hate. Choose love, not evil. Choose good, not evil. Jesus said, Greater love has there for no one else than to give their life for someone. And Jesus is saying, I'm giving my life for you. John 3.16 talks about, for God so loved us, he gave his son for us to die on the cross to take our sins away so that we might have the ability to relate to him and live with him forever. This is love, it says in 1 John, that God sent his son to take our sins away so that we might have life with him. So it's like God saying, your greatest need is to get your sins forgiven so you can have a good relationship with me and I can bless you and then I can take you to heaven forever and bless you there forever and ever. Not because he thinks we're so great with our good works or something from birth. It says that uh, even when we were still sinners, God sent Christ to die for us. And trying to love our enemies is sort of like trying to do the best thing we can for them. 
It's like Jesus said to me one time, one of the greatest things you can do for other people is to try to teach them my truth, regardless of whether they want to believe in it or not. So I'm always thinking, well, how can I try to help them to learn about God or love or truth? Because they got to start believing in that truth. They got to start believing God is love. They got to start believing they need to hear God's voice tell them to do loving things and seek the power of the Holy Spirit to do loving things. Else they're not going to be successful. It's like God wants parents to teach their children from an early age how to love God and love others for their success. Try to tell the kids they need power from on high, from the Holy Spirit, to put a selfish flesh nature in them from Adam and Eve. To death in them. They need to pray, hear God's voice, tell them the loving things to do, and then receive power from God's Holy Spirit to do it. So they can act like loving children. Love is the way to success in life. You can't do anything successfully without love. You can't be a good man without love. You can't be a good woman without love. You can't be a good husband without love. You can't be a good wife without love. You can't be a good child without love. You can't be a good single person without love. You can't be a good church without love. You can't be a good school without love. You can't be a good government without love. And because it's such a loveless world, we really need some God's love schools around. But it says that in the Bible that we are taught by God to love each other. If we want to understand God's love for us, His salvation through the cross for us, then we can start to get close to Him. Then we start to pray with Him, hear His voice, ask Him questions, learn truth from Him. He teaches us about His love and how to love others, even enemies. He teaches us we can't do it with our own strength. We've got to have the Holy Spirit's power to do it. And then we can go about trying to teach other people with supernatural power about God's love for them and how they need to start to love God for their success. That's what the gospel should be about, uh, love. God sent his son, Jesus died for your sins that can take their sins away and bring them closer to a loving God. It's the highest thing for them, preaching the gospel to them so they can get saved and start to get close to God and start back loving for their greatest success. And it's like nothing works successfully without love. Sex without love, unsuccessful. Sex with the power of God's love flowing through a husband and wife in a marriage bed, very powerful. Love is about thinking about the other person's needs. It's not about thinking about your selfish desires. It's not letting the flesh live in you. It's letting the Holy Spirit live in you. It's like Jesus in the husband and Jesus and the wife loving each other. Or Jesus and the father and Jesus and the kids loving each other. Jesus and the church members loving each other. But that doesn't happen very often. Satan doesn't want people understanding God's love, he doesn't want him reading the Bible, he doesn't want him understanding the salvation through the cross, love. People twist this meaning of the word love just to mean, what's my greatest selfish pleasure? That's not the way to success, that's the way to failure, but they get deceived about all this stuff. When God says in his word, love is most important, that's the truth to believe. <laughs> When God says in his word, love is not selfish, that's the truth to believe. When it says love is the way to success and that without love, it's failure. That is the truth to believe. When it says you can love your enemies with the power of God to love your enemies like he loved you when you were an enemy of his. That's the truth to believe. So we need to pray, say, what loving thing do you want me to do today, God? Get an answer back and start doing it. And that could be spending time with God. That could be prayer is a loving thing to do. Praying for others. Letting God speak to you and direct you what loving things to do. It's about trying to 
seek more of his Holy Spirit's power to enable you to do the loving things he's asking you to do. It's like God tells you to do something. Go love that enemy. Well, I can't do it. God gave me the power of your Holy Spirit to love that enemy, and that's how you do it. He tells you to do something. He gives you the power to do it. Go die on the cross for somebody. I can't, God. With my power, you can. And God could be right there through a martyrdom or something, helping you through it. And understanding that the greatest rewards in heaven are for the greatest suffering love in heaven. Abraham willing to sacrifice his son. Lots of rewards for you. Jesus dying on the cross for not his sins, other people's sins. The greatest rewards for you. Me trying to fight off Satan to teach truth to people. Good rewards for me. Persecution or whatever, like Paul. That's real love. Wanting to teach God's truth even if they hate you for it. Wanting to love your enemies even though they're trying to harm you, but God can help you to deal with the harm of your enemies. And your enemies don't get away with an ounce of their wickedness. God punishes them perfectly for their sins, so I don't have to do it. It says in the Bible that some people left their first love. They left their knowledge of how important love is. They left their ability to love other people. And God tries to call them to repent and return to that. Stop thinking love isn't important. Start thinking love is most important. Start doing it for your success. God wants the best for us, and choosing to obey him to love him and love others is the best for us. The world may not think so. God thinks so. It says in the Bible that they love not their lives until death. They had such a first powerful love for God. They kept it. They didn't let Satan steal it from them. That when God said, you're going to have to die doing this good work for others, martyrdom or something, they did it without loving their lives unto death. It's about, who cares about my selfish pleasures? I get happiness from loving others, doing good for others. When I do good for others, God does good for me. When I choose to act loving like he wants me to act loving, he shows me with love, joy, peace. He says, I like what you're doing, Rod. Keep up the good loving. Here's some more love, joy, and peace. Greater rewards are waiting for you in heaven for this. That's the successful emotions we need. Not how much money can I get my hands on today to be happy, or how many drugs can I get my hand on to be happy, or what kind of selfish pleasure can I do to try to love myself or something. That's not love for yourself. Love for yourself is sacrificing suffering, doing loving acts for others, and God blessing you with spiritual love, joy, and peace for doing it. That's the true way to happiness, spiritual joy, not physical happiness from eating pizza or something. Spiritual joy for maybe fasting and doing loving acts for your enemies and feeling the Holy Spirit upon you, filling you with joy doing it. For the joy set before Jesus in heaven, great rewards for suffering love, he suffered on a cross. So that's a bit about why love is so important, why God says love is most important. He is love. His Holy Spirit's fruit is love. His commandments are telling us to love. And if we love, we obey all the commandments. Love God and love others is the way to success. So that's a bit about God said love is most important.